Hey guys, Fat Buddy Cat here. How you doing? Tonight, we're going to perform some routine maintenance on a Trailmaster MB202. Alright, since everything we are servicing is underneath this cover, it's going to be the first thing to come off. Alright, now that our cover is off, put everything aside. And I'm going to pull off the juggernaut, the belt, and I'm also going to release the chain. After that, we're going to be removing the pulley. With the nut off, I'll remove the pulley, the sprocket, and this key. After that, we should be able to, yep, pull the jack shaft out, just like that. All right, and here is what we're after, guys. Um, I still have the stock bearings in my jack shaft, and they still spin. All right, and they're not making any crunching noise yet. Um, I went ahead and ordered some new ones, but we're going to see if we can get a little more life out of the ones that are on there. I got one out. Now I'm on the other side of the bike. Um, I think this is a Megamoto axle, maybe a doodle bug axle or something, and you have a lot of room. Okay, so you pretty much want to use the most blunt object that will fit in there. So when you're giving it the rap a tap a do, you're not uh, completely minging up the bearing. Okay, guys, what I mean is you want to maximize your bludgeoning force. Uh, this is not going to do it, all right? That's going to bounce off of this, and that is going to gouge your seal. In this instance, both of the inside seals were sitting inside of the tube. This one, I had smacked with that screwdriver. See? Speaking from experience, guys, don't do that. Next, you're going to want to pick, all right? Um, just like those thumb files that I have, guys, I find these, you know, in the little under $5 sections all the time. They come in like, I don't know, five packs with different angles on the end, but uh use them a lot. This is what they're for. Well, one of their many uses. Um, we're going to reach in, okay, to the edge, and we're going to pull the seals out, all right? Takes a little bit of work, but if you're careful, you won't mess it up. All right, I'll try this the best I can. What you want to do is take your pet, okay, and you're going to be going in along the edge and just prying that seal up. Okay, once you get it started, you can pretty much use your fingers. All right, and there you go. It's just like a thin, thin metal washer, all right, that's very malleable um, and it has rubber on it. Okay, and pressure holds it in here um, typically you would find grease in here with your ball bearings uh, there is a little bit of residual in here if you could see it up really close it's kind of a milky goldish color okay um, it's not very happy in there so 
they're not seized up they don't have any side to side play in them um, these bearings are still good so we're just going to be packing them with grease today and putting our seals back on uh, I have some new ones ordered it's good to have backups uh, now what went wrong with these guys is those inside seals came off somehow all right and what's going to happen then is when dirt gets inside that tube all right it's now going to find its way in the bearing um any fluid that's gotten gotten in there uh water ice snow stuff like that mud um it's also going to carry you know a particulate uh like a fine sand okay and that will stick to even that broken down grease that's in there all right and that will eventually break down the balls or the traces or something in here okay this is machined so we're talking precision all right Next, I'm going to take all my seals with the metal facing up. I'm going to place them on the concrete. And I'm just going to tap them flat with my heavy hammer. Beautiful. All right. Now I just take them outside. And looks like tonight we're going to be uh, getting on the old torque blast with the Kimball Midwest. All right, believe it or not, guys, I'm not panning for gold, but we are looking for whatever treasures might come out of these bearings. Um, we're going to have some dirt, uh, some larger particles, and... Uh, there might even be some bodies in here, guys. You never know. Seriously, don't be shy. Get right in there. Now I'm going to grab my air chuck and I'm going to uh, gently blow them out. Okay, now that I'm going to be handling these bearings, I'm going to have some gloves on and basically I'm just going to pack them full of this red grease all right and uh, I'm going to press my seals back in before I do any of that I'm going around with the clean dry cloth and I'm trying to get in, you know, around on the faces of the balls. Letting them kind of like roll along the cloth. And then, uh, you know, just wiping any residual off. Okay. I have one of my seals in. It's not really pressed in too tight yet. Now I'll put the next one. Um... You get better at these and you'll learn to kind of keep the grease where it's supposed to be. Um, I'm doing mine on these hard plastic chairs, so they're very easy to clean off afterwards. Okay, now I have those somewhat pressed in. I'm going to flip them over. They're slick. Do the other side. When you're doing this, think less smashed jelly donut and more tight jelly roll. All right, now that they're filled with grease from both sides, I'm going to press those seals in and I'm going to make sure they're thoroughly pressed in all the way around. When I do this, a lot of excess might come out. It's going to get on the gloves 
and I'm just going to be wiping it off and next time you see everything it should look brand new. Okay, now you just want to inspect your jack shaft tube and make sure it's clean of any debris. Your bearing should never take a lot to hit back into place. Um, at the very most, block of wood, a heavy hammer, and a couple taps when you're in your tight spots. Um, more so on the other side, where it's more recessed underneath the carburetor and behind the shroud. Again, on the carburetor side here, we're going to feed our jack shaft through to the other side. And you want to be careful that you don't knock the bearing out over there. I'll probably try to get up over the bike and use two hands. Alright, standing over the bike, I fed it in through that direction. And... I'm able to feel the shaft come through on the left side. All right, push it through as far as I can, and then firmly press the bearing in. And I just used my hammer and gave the end of my shaft a couple taps just to make sure it's right at home. Next thing, we're going to put the key back in and then our sprocket. Next, I'm going to put the pulley on and I'm going to reach over the bike, hold the jack shaft in and put this on with my left hand. The last part on the shaft is the nut. All right, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and service our Super 30 series. This one is the Juggernaut from gopowersports.com. All right, um, all of these units, guys, this is all they should take. Every single one of them, that's what it's taken. Um, even the Torquezilla, all right? I don't know why, when they manufacture these, they really, really drive those suckers home. All right, take that cap off, take the bell off. This is where the majority of our cleaning's gonna be, all right? We can take the driver unit off, and inspect our rollers okay go around and get a good tug on our springs everything feels tight everything looks straight i don't want to go throwing uh lubricants and stuff around all right Take a look over here. Everything's straight. We don't have a lot of buildup. By that, I mean rubber from the belt. And that's because we have really good alignment. Um, this, guys, is where you're going to find it. We got grass, rubber, dirt, everything. This thing is spinning around. It's some exuberant RPM. And, uh, it takes it all in. All right, one of my go-tos when I'm cleaning things like this is a, a real mild Windex kind of thing. All right, um, ammonia-based, it dries fast, and it doesn't leave a film, okay? Um, no soap or water or anything just out here in the garage okay so that's one pass and uh, I'll grab a clean rag 
spray it down and finish the job. There's another spot, let me get it, at the edge of the pressure plate, there it is, where rubber builds up on these, make sure you get that too. Alright, now that I've taken a paper towel, I've wiped down all of my surfaces, I'm going to start putting this thing back together. Alright, everything straight. Before you put your cap nut on, put a little bit of oil on the threads. Now what I do is I grab it with a glove, I press it against my body real tight, I hold it, and then I use my right hand and I torque the nut real hard but that's it no impact gun at this point we inspect our belt you know this one's good this is a Comet 203589 put my spacers on my key and I like to put just a glaze of that red grease on my shaft. Okay, and then I'll go back with a paper towel and I'll even wipe that off so it's just shiny. Then I'll put my juggernaut on. I like to separate my pulley a little bit and then pull my belt down because I do run mine a little snug with that adjustable plate and remember guys I might even have a different belt than you have all right I pull my key out to the edge belt on the juggernaut I just line it up slide it on and for you guys who might already be running the Torquezilla is the same process all right taking this apart uh, maintaining it putting it back together and getting the driver back on your motor grab a new lock washer and then the last thing we'll be doing is putting our bolt on our output shaft to tighten it the glove and the love that's all all right at this point we're going to be leaving the chain off and our cover off because tomorrow we're going to be removing the rear wheel assembly and replacing the brake rotor well that's going to be it for tonight guys but as always it's a work in progress thanks for watching take it easy i'll catch you on the next one